This is Selma Schimmel for the Group Room at the ESMO 2012 Congress happening now in Vienna. And I'm so happy to be joined by an old friend of the Group Room, Dr. Maddie Apro, Dean of the Multidisciplinary Institute of Oncology in Genolay, Switzerland. I know that uh, you have a session here dealing with anemia, emerging topics in anemia and cancer, updates in palliative and supportive care. And supportive and palliative care seems to be a really dominant theme. Well, I'm happy to say that support and palliative uh, has impressed you as being quite present here at ASMO uh, uh, as a past president of MASS, which is Multinational Association of Supportive Care in Cancer. I'm very happy that uh, this particular field is recognized as being an important part of the curative treatment of cancer patients. Can you tell us some of the highlights of your presentation? I basically looked at two different aspects. Uh, you certainly have heard, uh, everyone has uh, heard a little bit about the fact that a few years ago, uh, FDA and then the European Medicines Authority had to put a so-called black box, a warning about the use of ESAs in cancer patients indicating that if patients were not receiving chemotherapy, there had been reports of some negative outcomes. This then led to uh, some further considerations that uh, maybe there could be a risk even in patients receiving chemotherapy. In the past 18 months, we have had several studies that have been released that all show that there is no problem. When patients are adequately treated according to label, with these agents and are receiving chemotherapy, uh, either they benefit in terms of improved quality of life or decreased need of transfusions, or they just have no benefit, but there's no risk. And even in curative settings like the treatment of lymphoma, there are even some data that suggest that it might be beneficial, but these data that have not been fully published. The other aspect is that we learned at medical school already, a long time ago, that one of the main reasons of anemia in the population is that they don't have enough iron on board. And I think even the younger generation still know who Popeye the Sailor Man was, eating his spinach and being very strong. And what is in spinach and makes you strong is iron. And iron is an essential part of the elements that our body needs to be strong and to cope with all kinds of insults, injuries, and stresses. And if you don't have enough iron, there are many things that can go wrong. You are tired, you have fatigue, even if you're not anemic, even if your red blood cell mass is still good. But after a while, your red blood cell mass goes low, and that's what we call a drop of hemoglobin, and you can intervene. So you don't need they stimulate the production of red blood cells with those drugs that I alluded to earlier, the ESAs, but you just give iron. And once the production system in the body, the bone marrow, gets the iron, it starts to produce red blood cells again, the hemoglobin rises, the patient's fatigue tends to disappear, and patients do extremely well. So studies have now shown that indeed if you combine an ESA and iron, you improve in the activity of the ESA. And there are some suggestions that iron alone might already do quite the job. And so it's the, the implementation of, of, of iron in the program, that's what's so significant and new, correct? Absolutely. I think that now the recommendations, the guidelines, uh, are have incorporated iron as being uh, an essential part of the treatment of patients who have anemia and receive chemotherapy. Thank you, Dr. Matty Apro, Dean of the Multidisciplinary Institute of Oncology in Genolay, Switzerland. Thank you very much, Selma. My pleasure.